This is the story of the man who faced adversity from his family business but ended up turning the family business into a global conglomerate. Ratan Tata when appointed as the chairman of the Tata group faced tense suppression from other family members and older staff. How he overcame the intense rivalry from the family and staff to build Tata Sons and Company. To become a multi-billion company is something everyone should master. For the remainder of this video, I will be showing you how he was able to achieve all that. Hey everyone, and welcome to my YouTube channel where we inspire others with inspiring stories. In today's story we will go over the story of Ratan Tata and his company Tata Groups. As it's our tradition, before going into the main story, we like to give you a little background of the entrepreneur. For Ratan Tata, his story is worth considering as the perfect grass to grace story. Born on the 28th of December 1937 in Bombay, India, Ratan's biological parents Naval and Sanu divorced in 1948 when he was just 10 years old. Thankfully, Ratan Tata's grandmother stepped in and began to play a parental role in the life of Ratan. In an interview with the humans of Bombay, Ratan Tata disclosed that he had a happy childhood. But after his parents' divorce, his life went into shambles. He could barely achieve anything. For Ratan, his grandmother gets the credit for his success in life. His grandmother stuck out for him even when his father tried to interfere. Ratan Tata had a lot of misunderstandings with his father. Growing up Ratan wanted to learn how to play the violin, but his father insisted on the piano. He wanted to go to school in the US, but his father wanted to go to the UK. He wanted to pursue his passion and become an architect, but his father insisted on him being an engineer. Through it all, Ratan's grandmother was there to support him and to ensure he got what he wanted and deserved even if it meant going contrary to the wishes of his father. Against his father's wish, Ratan Tata's grandmother helped him secure admission at Cornell University, US, and despite being forced to do mechanical engineering, Ratan Tata's grandmother provided the support. He needed to switch departments and graduated as an architect. Although his father was not happy with him at first, Ratan Tata had built the courage to stand up to his father and demand what was good for him. He would go on to enroll in an advanced management program at Harvard Business School. Looking at Ratan Tata's journey so far, we can deduce that he knew what he wanted and always found a way to get it accomplished. Upon graduation from Cornell University, Ratan Tata secured his first job at a law firm in L.A. He wanted to be independent and stay out of the influence of his father. But life situations made his return back to India. Okay, to be specific, Ratan Tata worked in an architecture firm in Los Angeles for two years, he was well paid, had his car, and was very comfortable. His quality of life was good enough to make him not go back to India but he soon learned that his grandmother who gave him everything in life was ill and needed attention. Ratan Tata wanted to be there for his grandmother so badly that he forfeited his relationship with the lady he was in love with who didn't want to follow him back to India. Although Ratan Tata only planned to move back temporarily to India, the movie was the beginning of his success at the Rata Group. From ground to the top of Tata Groups now in India, Rajan Tata immediately got busy and joined the family business in 1961. Humble Ratan decided to start from the lowest ranks, working on the shop floor of Tata Steel and also shoveling limestone and handling blast furnaces. Ratan Tata was the apparent heir to the family business. They had no children, the Tata family had issues with bearing children. Even Ravan, Tata's father was adopted, and for Ravan Tata, there are no records of him getting married or bearing children. Despite holding potential power in the business, Ratan Tata initially stayed back in the US to pursue his dreams. And on getting back to India, he decided to start his career at the root level of the company, working with the laborers and helping build the company from the bottom to the top. Ratan Tata is a hardworking and inspirational leader who rose very fast through the ranks and headed a few internal departments. In 1971, he was appointed the director in charge of the National Radio and Electronics Limited. His excellence in this organization together with his continued hard work at the Tata Group led to his being named as the chairman of Tata Industries, the group's holding company. Ratan Tata during his chairmanship at the group holding promoted large investments in high technology businesses. He spearheaded the listing of the company at the New York Stock Exchange, giving it visibility to global investors. The success of Tata Groups may not have been possible without Ratan Tata, but while Ratan Tata was successful at Tata Groups, he also witnessed failures in the buildup of his chairmanship at the Tata Group. A few cases worthy of mention is during his chairmanship at the National Radio and Electronics Limited. An economic recession set in around 1977, which caused union strike and lockout. Although, it was not his fault, this stalled his progress at the electronic company. The same challenges affected the Empress Mills branch of the Tata Groups. Having suffered labor costs, Ratan Tata needed money to invest into operations but the other branches of the company didn't release the money to support the mill. The mill would later shut down, but generally, Ratan Tata's success at the company was still glaring. In life, you win some, you lose some. And for Ratan Tata, the pressure continued to mount despite his success through the company. The pressure became severe in 1991 when J.R.D. Tata, the owner of the Tata Group stepped down from the company and announced Ratan Tata as his successor. 
Older associates and members of the family business became political and started working against his appointment. Tactical Ratantata strategized a means to eliminate the bad eggs, being that most people who were working against him were old staff. He introduced a new rule for older staff to retire at the age of 65. Although Ratantata has not come out to confirm this is the reason for the retirement age, a lot of people insist. That is the reason, well, as long as it helped remove the bad eggs from the company and move the company forward, who cares about his reasons. Today Tata Groups is worth over $314 billion and are on a fast track to hitting over $400 billion. Lessons from failures and achievements like we saw earlier, Radin Tata experienced a few failures, but Radin considers failure as part of success. To institutionalize failure as a part of growth, he launched a prize for the best failed idea. You see, a lot of things lead to failure, and for Radin Tata, things like union strikes and lack of funds made. Some of his company's business suffer setbacks. On announcing this prize for failed ideas, Radin Tata said he wanted to encourage small businesses to take bigger risks and remove the fear of failure. Taking a look at the achievement of Radin, I can tell you for sure that his risks paid off. From leading a successful bid to acquire Chorus, an Anglo-Dutch steel and aluminum producer, to Jaguar Land Rover from the Ford Company. Yes, if you have heard of these vehicles, then know that the brilliance of Radin Tata is behind them. He also launched a first pan-Indian car called Indica in 2000, fully manufactured in India, and in 2010, the company's revenue rose by 12 folds. Today, Radin Tata sits on several boards like Fiat Spa, JP Morgan Chase, Rolls Royce, Temasek Holdings, and so on. Following his numerous successes, he was honored Padma Bhushan by the government of India with the highest honor in the country. He also received an honorary doctorate in business administration from Ohio State University, the honorary doctorate in technology from the Asian Institute of Technology, Bangkok. Another honorary doctorate from the University of Warwick, making it three honorary doctorates under his sleeves. Amidst all the success, Radin Tata recognizes his humble beginnings and gives back immensely to society. Time may not permit us to go into detail his several humanitarian activities, but just to mention that he gave away two-thirds of Tata Group to charitable trusts that finance good causes around the world. Books recommendation is as our tradition, we will now share a few books that Radin either wrote or recommends. Make sure to grab a copy and read. Abundance, The Future is Better Than You Think by Peter Diamandis. The writer dives into the future to predict that humanity will be able to meet all its needs in the future. One of the things we didn't mention in the video is Radin's passion for technology. His grand vision for the Rada Empire includes powering the world with electric cars and automation in all fields. This book also explores the technology path to predict that in the near future, humans would have all they need to blossom. But the writer didn't just rely on his knowledge to make such bold and powerful predictions. He went on to consult powerful technocrats like Larry Page, Elon Musk, Stephen Hawking, and of course, our very own Radin Tata with other giants across the world. We highly recommend this book to shape your mind about the future and how you can actively participate in shaping it. Grab a copy and read yourself into the future. The Wisdom and Wit of Radin Tata, written by Radin Tata. As mentioned in the video, there is just so much that Radin achieved and passed through that we were not able to cover in this video, but you still have a chance to read about the phenomenal life of the chairman of the Tata Group. This book written by Radin Tata is a synopsis of his motivations for success. Giving the big task of handling India's biggest business conglomerate comes with a big sense of responsibility. The wisdom that helped Radin in the rainy days, the boldness he required to make difficult decisions, and make the bold move are all engraved in this book as nuggets of knowledge and insights. This book is not another biography, it is more like a guide to help you succeed like Radin Tata. Grab a copy as soon as you can. To achieve success, you must be open to failure and also stay humble. Thank you to watch my video, to watch more interesting videos, subscribe my channel, and don't forget to bell icon.